There's always going to be armchair quarterbacks that have never sat in my seat. Developing now at noon, Baltimore's mayor defends her city's response to 12 hours of widespread looting, fires, and violence. Earlier this morning, Baltimore crews were out working to clean up the damage from the widespread rioting. A thousand National Guard troops have been deployed to the city, and this afternoon, the city remains in a state of emergency. Nearly 200 people were arrested and at least 15 police officers were hurt in the riots. It began with peaceful protests shortly after the funeral of Freddie Gray, who died while in police custody. CBS 4's Natalia Zaire joins us now with the latest. And Natalia, things have calmed down in Baltimore for now. Yeah, and the focus this afternoon, Elliot, seems to have shifted from getting the city under control to cleaning up the debris, tending to the injured, and figuring out what needs to be changed to prevent what happened last night from happening again when the sun goes down. As members of the National Guard took position on the ground in Baltimore, volunteers began cleaning up glass and debris outside this CVS pharmacy. The store was looted Monday. Firefighters spent the morning hosing down debris from the 15 buildings and 144 vehicles set on fire during the rioting that began just hours after 25-year-old Freddie Gray was laid to rest. Gray died from a spinal injury while in police custody. The city erupted into chaos. Rioters pelted officers with objects and set cars on fire. Police responded with pepper spray. Investigators now say this fire was set on purpose during the riots, setting ablaze a low-income senior citizen's home that was under construction. The governor of Maryland issued a state of emergency, and this morning he shook hands with people on the ground working to restore peace. Everybody worked as hard as they can. They were simply outmanned. Um, they needed some support and backup. They asked for it, and we brought it. Baltimore's mayor also responded to criticism that she didn't move quickly or aggressively enough to quell the unrest. We had uh, a, a very aggressive strategy. Uh, what happened was we had splinter groups that uh, went in every different direction, and it was a different, uh, it, it turned into a different uh, incident, and we worked to respond on the ground in, in real time. The city's police commissioner said many of the rioters were high school students who used social media to join up and cause chaos. This mother wasn't having it. She saw her son throwing rocks on TV, tracked him down, and gave him a public beat in front of television cameras. The police commissioner and many parents across social media applauded her actions. And if you saw on one scene, you had one mother who grabbed their child who had a hood on his head and she started uh, smacking him on the head because she was so embarrassed. I wish I had more parents that uh, took charge of the kids out there. Now that same police commissioner is asking all parents to keep their kids home today and tonight. School is canceled in that city and the mayor has issued a citywide curfew starting at 10 p.m. Also, the Baltimore Orioles Chicago White Sox game set for tonight has been postponed. Natalia Yazea, CBS 4 News. OK, Natalia, thank you very much. And now here's a look at front page headlines from around the country. The Baltimore Sun carried the headline riot erupts with a photo of a protester with a gas mask and police officers behind him. The New York Times headline read, Clashes Rock Baltimore After Funeral, Curfew is Set. You can also see a picture of police standing in a row. And the headline in the New York Post tabloid read, Baltimore Burning, while the Washington Post headline read, Riots After Grace Funeral. The national media, as you can see, focused on the city of Baltimore today. And stay with CBS 4 News and CBSMommy.com for continuing coverage of the city under siege, the riots in Baltimore. 